Hello, good morning. It's Wednesday morning here in the UK. And our local time is 6.28. Hi, Ayanura, welcome. Hello. Are you Hi, good morning. Good morning, Salaam alaikum. Are you outside? No, I'm at home. Ah, because there's some kind of noise coming. Is it from any machine? My window is open. Is it coming? But it's less, I think. All right, okay. Oh, that's great. So, how are you doing today? Mm. <laughs> I'm normal. <laughs> great. Uh, normal. Mm -hmm. But even though you're normal, we don't say I'm normal. I'm doing great or I'm doing well. I'm I'm doing well. Okay. <laughs> um, that's that's fine. All right. Okay. Hello. What about you? I'm always fantastic. How are you today? You are always fantastic. I'm always fantastic, as you know. Mm -hmm. Hello, Harry, AA, Wesley, Spoiler. Welcome. AA, I believe that you subscribe to my another lesson. Uh, please bear in mind you have if you have subscribed to a lesson you can join only in that class with as a subscriber but in order to join here you need to uh, either use a monthly subscription or free trial or two dollars you know, hello cash this is how it works all right so today we're going to show you about um, some writing skill Mm -hmm. uh, Did you, by the way, may I ask a I think I subscribe to your lesson, but when you are streaming, I also have to pay money. No, if you just make comment, then I can bring you. If I if I comment, okay. Yeah, if you comment, I can bring from there. Mm. But if you send a request, then you have to pay. That's I always ask. Mm. Do not send a request. Make I a comment. Now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so uh, are you practicing any writing at home? Yeah, I, I write it about aging people thing, but I didn't uh, put it on proper paper, like laziness teacher. Okay. Hello, true. I'm quite good. Thanks for the question, guys. How about you? So, I'm going to show you, share the page in a moment. <coughs> All right. Can you see the screen? Yeah, I can see. You can see it, right? Yeah. All right. And I'll explain in a moment. Uh, many people say that, um, you know, uh, IELTS writing part is the most hardest part. Okay. Because when you're writing, you need to follow the 100% grammar rules to make the sentence correct. Mm -hmm. And also you must follow the different kinds of grammar patterns, sentence patterns as well, like simple sentence, compound mm -hmm. sentence, complex sentences, exclamation. Mm -hmm. You must use the correct spelling. You must use the correct uh, punctuations as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you all are aware of it, right? I'm aware. <laughs> okay, so briefly, in written section or writing part of IELTS exam, as you know, there are two types of tests, academic and general. And both mm -hmm. of them have got two tasks, task one and task two. Task one has 150 words you have to write and you'll get uh, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And as you know, the total mark is nine and you'll get roughly 30% mark from there. Mm -hmm. And task two, we just got 250 words and you have 40 minutes to complete the task and you'll get 70% marks make sure you answer both of them mm -hmm. 
okay and as you can see um sometimes people say that how many words more you can write generally it is 10 person so for 150 mm -hmm. words you can write 165 for 250 words you can write 275 this is the general mm -hmm. rule though in some cases i have noticed many examiners accept more than even 15 to 20 percent words so mm -hmm. basically it depends on the examiner's discretion decision mm -hmm. so, uh, Ainura, uh, did you sit for the test before i've six did, I what? did you yeah i took trial i just uh, now uh, was um <clears throat> I'm looking for my uh, listening 5.5, .5, reading 5.0, uh, writing 6.0, speaking 6.0, total score 5.5. .5. Okay, and but it was uh -huh. like before hello. <laughs> uh, before joining hello, okay, that's fine. And was it academic or general? I think it was academic. So you know all what's, that. What's the reason? Like, what's the main difference? okay academic test is required if you are starting to if you are going to start you're studying in English speaking countries or if you're applying mm -hmm. for a scholarship training mm -hmm. registration mm -hmm. so for any kind of studies like it could be undergraduate graduate postgraduate PhD mm -hmm. program postdoctoral program mm -hmm. and general training is needed mostly if you are migrating to some country or you're going to start your work mm. okay that's the basic difference which is one uh, easier second general second one is easier but it depends which one you should take what kind of uh, your future plan are you going to apply for the immigration or are you going to apply mm -hmm. for a study okay, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So that is the uh, main impact to choose which IELTS for you. Mm -hmm. So as you know, in academic test, uh, in task one, uh, you have to write 150 words in 20 minutes. However, remember that um, it's a matter of practice in both cases. If you don't write, then it will be difficult to write on the test. So it will be my suggestion for you and all the people who are listening to me to have good practice of writing. And also, if you're not sure whether your writing is correct or not, get it checked by the competent qualified teacher who can mm -hmm. help you, support you, explain you, your flaws, mm -hmm. your weak sides, and give you feedback as well, which I do. As you know, many of our, <laughs> my students send me their writings through email i check them mm -hmm. and send them back i checked today teacher my first class i joined here yes but after the my in... pronunciation it is different yeah I, <laughs> I, I i can see the difference obviously mm -hmm. like uh, i'm more confident speaker like now it was like 12 <laughs> months ago but the difference is huge Okay, so you it is it is coming. Maybe maybe in late autumn I can be able to take it from. All right. So you mean to say you have developed your pronunciation? Definitely. If you practice Yeah, if you practice you'll develop your fluency, your speaking style, your pronunciation, your grammar, your vocab. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of practice, remember. Mm -hmm. And it is doable. Yeah. You have to focus on your weak sides first, then you go on the rest of the part of your English learning journey. My okay. Art is mm -hmm. That's right. Now, in academic test task one, mm -hmm. uh, as you say, 20 minutes, 150 words. So literally, you have to write eight words in a minute. Like so, two lines. Of uh, it depends two lines three lines depends what kind of sentences you use if you remember it's better to use compound and simple sentence in some cases complex sentences mm -hmm. and test one 
you get generally pie chart, table, map, process diagram, bar chart, line graph, line chart, pie and bar chart, etc. Mm -hmm. And you have to develop your writing from there. And what are the marking criteria for the task one? The marking criteria are task response 25 percent what it means uh Ainura, can you please explain what does task yes, response task response uh how you develop um how you depicted the picture correctly that's right so you have to uh, respond to the question that you have been asked in the task mm -hmm. like they can say from this you know, uh, diagram describe uh, the mm -hmm. trend or the percentage or whatever mm -hmm. so you have to just follow those instructions carefully so that is the task response and you get 25 percent marks which is easily possible for you mm -hmm. then coherence and cohesion what it means it means that when you are writing you write step by step only about the topic mm -hmm. and remember the step by step is a very amazing way to describe like you're describing say a chart about the education literacy or education rate of a country right then you're going to write education rate and how it has affected in the next few years. All right, so that's that's the procedure. And the next one is lexical resources, which means you have to use the correct vocabs, vocabulary. It could be synonyms, it could be antonym, it could be phrasal verbs, it could be group verbs. Uh, please mm -hmm. remember in writing we have to be careful many words we are not allowed to write we shouldn't write i should say like many informal words slangs and many idioms we do not use in writing for example we don't say in writing i'm over the moon i'm under the weather okay these types of mm -hmm. idioms we express only in spoken english or over the moon you said did you? over the moon means i'm very happy yeah. under the weather I'm, I'm sick i'm not well under the weather okay. very often people use that you know when i say hey how are mm. you well i'm over the moon that means i'm very happy something good things have happened to me mm. uh, okay yeah. so these are the sa some examples we'll go through details one by one mm -hmm. and then uh, grammar range and accuracy that is the important part when you're writing sentences make sure you follow only one spelling techniques as you know that there is spelling technique of british english and american english do not mix them up in the same topic mm -hmm. for example color c-o-l-o-e were british spelling and mm -hmm. color c-o-l-o-r in american spelling mm -hmm. uh, likewise utilize yeah mm -hmm. i'm going to give an example hang on a second like color yeah versus color, mm -hmm. color. Yeah. like utilize versus utilize with z mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. yeah so first one is the British spelling and second one is American and do not mix them up in the same mm -hmm. topic mm -hmm. so they will uh, lower your score point? They will affect your score because the examiner mm -hmm. will think that oh this person and the candidate is not aware of the differences of British and American English. Mm -hmm. It will affect your score. Mm -hmm. Okay, and general writing tips. So that's the task one. Uh, we'll discuss task two later. So the writing tips. There are tons of tips. First one is you must have good knowledge about grammar. Okay, I know Ryan, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, try to use them correctly try to write them correctly and this is the question do you know how to write an essay when you're school and colleges or maybe university we had to write assignment essay uh, yeah. drill exercise yeah, I did a lot. so you did a lot so the basic idea of writing um, and I'll introduction then you will just enhance your idea and then conclusion yeah bo body part introduction remember body that part. body par paragraph or body part 
and conclusion. So what do we write in the introduction? We call mm -hmm. it topic sentence or prompt appropriately. So briefly telling when you watch a movie, sometimes you can see the movie trailer in five to 10 seconds, right? Before the movie starts. So introduction is that one. You're giving the whole idea in your own way, in your own words, uh, in two to three sentences. That's why you need to know paraphrasing. You need to know the synonyms of the words. You need to know how to write those words in a different grammatical structure. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. So in the body paragraphs, uh, minimum you have to write two paragraphs. Depending on the content, on context, you can write three, four paragraphs. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll explain how to understand whether you have to write three or four paragraphs when you get a topic. Mm -hmm. And the conclusion part is the part where you can, you know, write your own suggestion, recommendation, and any other thoughts. Any other thoughts? Any other thoughts, thoughts? That is any other thoughts of your own thoughts. Remember, because you are writing your your own concepts. Remember that. Can you write this word? Did you force? Hmm. Thoughts, you mean? I can't thoughts, yeah, thought. The plural number. That means you can write two, three things together. Mm. Especially and it's particularly vital for task two. In task two, you must write conclusion. Though many people say that task one, we cannot write any conclusion, but uh, to me, you can write it. One or two lines, depending on the you know, context. Mm -hmm. You just can repeat um, from the task or from the body part the uh, most important sentence. That's right. So remember, I say it many times reading the questions carefully and understanding them is the most important in IELTS exam for uh, writing and reading part as well as speaking part and listening as well. If you do not understand the question, it will be difficult for you to respond it. And it is suggested in IELTS exam, do not guess. Mm -hmm. So if you're not sure, if you're confused, then it will be difficult for you because there is no one to ask you. Okay, you cannot ask anyone. Like you can yes. ask me, like here in the class, but when in the real life exam, you can ask any teacher, hey teacher, what does it mean now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I took that uh, um, air that <laughs> from the exam. I took that um, feeling of. Yeah. Okay. Now, hang on a second. Teacher, uh, do they uh, lower your uh, score for fa false answers? Say again. Uh, it is better to put uh, and guess the answer or let it uh, let it empty uh, because uh, wrong answers can uh, lower your score false answers or you have to if you don't know guess it it is better so are you saying that if you answer wrongly, will it be uh, affecting your skull? Yeah. Uh, definitely, if you give wrong answer, if you give the answer something different, which is not relevant, that is out of coherence and cohesion. I mean, it's better to leave it empty if you do not know? If you do not know, if you leave empty, then you're not getting any marks at all. But if you write something, possibly you're not going to get mark, but there is no negative marking in IELTS exam. So, uh, if you did the wrong answer, it doesn't uh, lower your score. You should try to do something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? No. Okay, hang on a second. 
I've got a mess, very urgent message. Um, so, uh, how is your day going on? Day going? Yeah. What's your plan? Uh, for what? See, these are common questions sometimes that what's your plan for the day? Like, what are you going to do later? Uh, do we practice now speaking what? You are practicing speaking now. After finishing that, what are you going to do? How are you going to spend the whole day? Mm. Um, I, <clears throat> I'm going to do my work. I have to do my task. I have, I have, I already uh, delaying it. I hope I will finish it by today and relax. Mm, I write. I, I have to write also to you, teacher, um, one topic about aging people. It's, it bothers me, this aging. I want to share. Um, Could you please speak loudly? Sometimes your voice is low. I can't hear you clearly. I'm sorry. I will do my main job. And what time your job starts? I just received task and I have to do it. And when I am finished, I just um, send it back. There is no schedule. Strict schedule. Okay. Great. <coughs> so, yeah, I go. I hope go I will finish uh, and write properly my topic to you. It's about aging people. This topic is bothering me because uh, because of my parents, I think, and also I um, like aging, and uh, I, f I feel more um, like respect and courtesy to aging people because I am aging myself, I think. Okay, because that's, that's I'd great. I'd like to share with you my insight. All right. That's, that's great. Okay, let's move on. So first, an important part is that understand the questions carefully, correctly, effectively. You can only answer when you understand the question, right? Yes, sir. Can you write me what you ask me, wiggling yourself? Uh, I asked you what's your plans what are your plans for the day or what are you going to do the rest of the day yeah this this expression I understand completely but you said it in other words with other words so Which it means that what are you going to do after finishing this lesson are you going to stay at home cook cook something or are you going to do something are you going to watch movies read books etc mm -hmm. how you're going to spend the time that means mm -hmm. Okay. Can you write it? Use this word, this sentence you asked me. Okay, write, uh, I'm writing in the comment box. Mm -hmm. Usually, I understand um, what I am asked to. What are your plans for the day? Was it you were like said diggling? What What are you diggling? Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. I heard that you ask like, uh, what are what, your degrees? What are you doing? What are you doing the rest uh, of the day? It means. Okay. Mm. okay, so it can be asked in a few ways. What are you doing uh, later? Or what are your plans for the day? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so this mm -hmm. is a very common question. Sometimes people ask you. All right, so let's move on. So uh, read the questions carefully and identify the type to which it belongs. Is it asking for a solution or an opinion? Are you supposed to criticize the argument or back it up? Identifying this is half of the job, look, and it will take you a long way in your essay writing. So when you understand the question, it will be easier for you to you know, present your writing. Mm -hmm. All right. And the next word we say is brainstorm. Have you heard this word before? Yeah, brainstorm. Yeah. yeah, so brainstorm is the common process 
when you set up your mind what you're going to write in the right, uh, writing task one or task two or even in a, uh, a class assignment if you're a student of undergrad graduate or postgraduate or thesis student so work with them prompt is, uh, prompt is just read the prompt it means the task read the prompt prompt means read the topic carefully and after mm -hmm. reading you can feel that what they're asking you can understand what they're asking so spend mm -hmm. one to two minutes it says take around five minutes five minutes will be too long to jot down the main point, to write down an example and pop into your head, these ideas and thoughts will be crucial for your draft. We call it mapping out. Mapping the essay out provides for clarity when it comes to writing. This is one of the most important tips out there. Write the first draft of your essay based on tip one. The tip one is this one, brainstorm, okay? Mm -hmm. and five w's and one h you know that is we call w's questions what are the w's questions mm, what when mm -hmm. who, right why, why and how uh, mm. so ask this question to the topic and you'll get most of the answers from there then you write freely and please remember to stick to the topic what you have been asked do not write anything unnecessary irrelevant and out of topic mm -hmm. personalize it personalize it means when you're giving examples for the topic you give examples from your personal life mm -hmm. uh, like uh, because the essay is going to be read by the examiner uh, sometimes it is better to write your own example like one a question what is the bad impact of watching tv can, um, can you please tell me the answer um your time is uh, going to your hands you lose your time and um uh, you can have some back ache because you're sitting for long right and you just uh, take receive unuseful information maybe mm -hmm. um, you can do uh, you can do other things much better for yourself than watching tv like okay you prefer uh, worse things okay great but if you the here as you can give an example like uh, the example could be, I've got a nephew who watches TV whole day. He doesn't want to study. No? So this is just an example. Though it may not be the true, you have got a nephew or not, but you can give an example like this, because the examiner isn't going to ask you whether it's the right or wrong information, mm -hmm. whether you have got a nephew or not. Yeah. And also watching TV whole day, sitting on the sofa, we call it couch potato. You know this expression, yeah? No. And it can have also impact on your obesity, weight gain, because you're eating much, you're sitting on the sofa and watching TV whole day. Mm. <laughs> obesity disease, yeah? Yeah, yeah couch, potato. Couch is like, couch, yeah. Is it the correct spelling, potato? I'm Eat. always confused. I think without E in the end. Yeah, without E. Potatoes is the plural. Mm -hmm. So let me write it correctly. What means sofa? Mm. Couch. Potato. Couch. Couch, potato. We use uh, potato to say for noses, which are like circle noses. We say potato nose. What is potato nose? 
uh, here it is also potato uh, couch potato is like a uh, what we say it's idiom and we are uh, you in our country it is used to say for uh, noses which are round without h edge oh. without any edge it is potato nose okay i just shared it <laughs> And I got your point. Okay, that's great. Okay, I'm gonna say I need to check something quickly. <clears throat> Did you choose yourself I'll see them or type with them in your life? Okay. Have you Yes? In order to work in the healthcare sector in the UK, you must yeah. have 7.5 in IELTS academic, reading, mm. writing, speaking, and listening. Mm -hmm. uh, that is mandatory. Do you do it like every five years? No, we don't have to do every five years. Once you have done it, once you, in life, right? yeah, mm -hmm. once you have registered, you know, okay. that's the time where you have to do the IELTS exam. That is like a entry or eligibility criteria to work as a doctors, pharmacies, nurses, okay, chiropractor, and many other professions in the UK. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. In many countries as well, not only in the like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, you must have seven point five in academic if you want to register in healthcare sector. Mm -hmm. You have to prove them that you are qualified to speak. Write and listen, you know, and IELTS exam is the only way that can prove it. And mm -hmm. uh, which is why UK government has started immigration from this year. So they're recruiting many nurses, doctors, pharmacists around the world. And the requirement mm -hmm. is uh, three years experience and 7.5 in IELTS exam. Mm -hmm. You can get a work permit, you can come to the UK to work and you can be a citizen later after five years. So I have to do it with my family, it's quite difficult, I think. I so, cannot go by my own. Okay, so what's your profession? I forgot to ask you. Uh, I am a banker. You're a banker, okay. For the banking jobs, Canada is a very amazing and suitable country. Canada, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so personally, stick to the formal language. It is very important. Formal language. So remember, there are many words that we do not use in IELTS exam. And one of the examples is a lot of. People will say, I've got a lot of friends, or tons of friends, or lots of. We do not use any of them. We use instead much or many, depending on the subject. And secondly, we do not use a direct sentence like, I'm going to describe in this topic. No, we use indirect or passive voice. Like mm. this, this topic will describe or it will be described in passive voice. Okay. Uh, what about, oh, there are the rays. Is it okay to use? Sorry, what's that? Uh, it's okay to use there are the rays. Yes, there are the rays is also indirect. It's not direct sentence either. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then avoid repetition and embrace punctuation. Uh, sometimes in writing even some people try to write the same words or same in the types of pattern again. Do not do that if you want to get good marks. Use punctuation. It, it was <laughs> repetition and embrace punctuation. You, uh, know, you know punctuation like full stop, comma, or full yeah, stop, yeah. there are semicolon. Embrace comma. means half, yeah? Embrace, embrace means have it. Half. Use it correctly. Use it. Okay. And generally, embrace means hugging. You know the meaning of hugging? Hugging. Hugging, yeah. Embrace, yeah embrace. <laughs> this is the direct meaning, embrace. But here it means that you use it correctly. Yeah, I, I know this word. I learned from uh, Julie, teacher lesson from Canada. It was first teacher I subscribed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I took one class and she uh, said that she's going to vacation and this is her last class. 
I, I, that's what I just, um, I learned this word from her class and it um, stick on my head, in my head. Okay. Uh, if you can read it, you'll be able to find more information. Shall I read? Uh, it's after you, but if not, we'll go through quickly. The lexical resource is one of the four criteria that the IELTS use just to create your essay. The other three being task achievement, quotation, and grammatical range and accuracy. Lexical resource deals with qualities of punctuation, spelling accuracy, word formation, and range of vocabulary. Add some flair to your language and avoid dull. Dull, teacher? Do you know the meaning of dull? No. Mm -hmm. Any guess? Uh, repetition used at, uh, usage of words. Ah, I cannot guess dull. Mm. Avoid, avoid dull. dull yeah? Shall I guess? Uh, not interesting, not exciting. Mm. Okay, not related. It could have a different meaning depending on this uh, context. Mm. It could be boring. Mm. Okay, like he's a dull person. That means he's not an interesting person. He's a boring person. Mm. Repetitive usage of words. It's a negative word, remember. Uh -huh. yeah. For the latter causes, the examiner, examiner to think that you have a poor knowledge of the language. Mm -hmm. Latter causes means latter bad causes. Letter? Hang on a letter, second. Letter causes. Uh, let, letter causes. Letter means after what? Mm. Letter. Late, it's like uh, the same if late one root like that. No, no, no. So remember later and letter and letter. Mm -hmm. There's difference. This letter means when something is going to happen afterward. So if you're writing mm -hmm. something now and the exam is going to mark it afterward that we can say letter. The exam is going to check your writing letter. Okay? Mm. Okay, next one is build your general knowledge and peruse IELTS essay topics. Any idea what it means? Build your general knowledge and Peruse, peruse, your IELTS essay Here is a useful link. Mm -hmm. I think I, I, I have to. Here is a useful link that contains a lot of IELTS essay topics. This will ensure that you have a repository of information to draw from the year. From then, you are actually writing the exam. It is always a good idea to read newspapers, magazines, and books. They will build your general knowledge and your recovery as well. You will also get a sense of grammatical intuition where you just know when a sentence fills up. Mm -hmm. General knowledge, yeah, I understood. Per use, I would say topics. Which means um, there are uh, like, um, topics in this link. And when you read them, you get an idea how to write, right? Mm. It is, um, I understood that in IELTS, you have to be like wise and literate because there can be uh, very different topics. I, I got like one topic about insects about bees, how they manage their life and what they can teach to people from their style of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there was one topic about uh, building in, in China in certain uh, years and how this uh, building uh, style shifted 
and what they uh, have advantages like in building like it is very um, they use very uh, specific to the topic words that you don't use it in your life so you okay. have gen have to <laughs> have general knowledge in every field of uh, of life like medicine health cosmos cosmic space technology quality all right it says about this right here or you can correct it right yeah okay so there is a link for different types of topics okay complete your mm -hmm. task seriously there is no elaboration required for this so you have to complete whatever you have been asked practice mm -hmm. test that means practice writing and get it checked by yeah, qualified teacher. The more doesn't mean better. <laughs> it means it means that the more you practice, you'll be more confident. Mm -hmm. All right, dear viewers, if anyone is interested to join, you have to subscribe this lesson. Being a new user, possibly you might be able to get two free lessons, or if not, then you have to subscribe the whole month. This is how Hello works. And then you can participate here the la way Ainura has joined. We can practice speaking, reading, writing, and listening. And I've got a listening test as well. When you finish you know, writing and speaking session, then we'll do some listening test to give you more uh, insight about the IELTS exam. Okay, task two is higher band score, as I said. Task as it may refers to your ability to answer all the questions. Questions means flow. I have already explained lexical resources, ability to use wide range of vocabs. When you describe a chart, a pie chart based on grammar. So in task two, now task achievement. Other three criteria are the same. What does it mean? Similarly, whatever you have been asked, you have to write there. I'm going quickly a little bit to pay attention to all issues in the question, ask the questions. Write about the issues rather than just the general topic. Answer the ask a question with relevant main points. Plan your supporting points so that they don't go off the topic. Now, it is very important you write compound sentences than complex mm -hmm. sentences. And I'm sure yeah. you know that, yeah? And also you write simple sentences in some cases, like declaration, in state. my own mother language, it is common, so I just translate it in English. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get you. In my mother language, it is very common to use complex sentences, so I just use the same logic. Oh, that's great then. Then you'll be better in English writing. Mm -hmm. Just it's a matter of practice, remember that. Because sometimes people write sentences where the words are not used properly, where the grammar is lost or when it doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. okay briefly a compound sentence is a sentence that has at least two independent clauses joined by a comma semicolon or conjunction or sometimes by subordinate clauses i mean uh, coordinating conjunctions okay so an independent clause is like a sentence that has got one subject one verb and forms a complete thought i'll give you an example Look at this example. The house is too expensive. And the house is too small. There are two sentences. And they have connected using and. Mm -hmm. The house is too expensive, comma. You must use comma, remember. Mm -hmm. And the house is too small. Uh, can you give me one second, please? I'll be back. Okay. <coughs>
back. Sorry. Hi, Nora. Okay, so uh, it is compound sentence, which has got two uh, subjects, two verbs, and the individual sentence that are connected through comma, semicolon, or conjunction. Okay, so the, generally the com common conjunctions are acronyms of fanboys, where for and no, but or yet so this is the mnemonic device which stands for the coordinating conjunction these words when used to connect two independent clauses must be preceded by a comma that is the rule we also use although is though, although, until, unless, however. Okay, and our local time is 7.16. And we're talking about the writing part of IELTS exam. Ras has a question. Can directly add a yes sentence? Uh, could you just write a complete sentence? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't understand. You just wrote half of the sentence. So you have to remember that the requirements of compound sentences in compound sentences there should be you know two independent clauses and generally each of the independent clauses has one subject one verb and which does not depend on each other Oh, welcome back. Sorry, I am muted when you leave, and I thought that you were listening to me. I was speaking here. Welcome back. <laughs> no, I said to you, you have <laughs> muted. Maybe you didn't listen to me. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Hang on a second. Um, One moment, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, as I saying, is it right written nonetheless, teacher? Oh, it's nonetheless, nonetheless. You this can use nevertheless as well. These are just examples, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, all the same thing. I, I think I, I, I'm watching it for the first time now, Dallas. Okay, uh, Raj, the matter is that when you use these words, if it fulfills the criteria of compound sentence, like there should be two individual sentences. But if you write and, and, and is fine, uh, without, with an, instead of. 
we do not write compound sentence with instead of unfortunately you can sort them together but that may not be compound sentence okay some examples uh, would you like to give an example of compound sentence please uh, Ainura mm -hmm. Although I, I had no money at that moment, I managed to get where I wanted. Alright, that's right. So let me write it. It's a good example. Although I had no money, right? Mm -hmm. Nini, did you say but? I managed to. I managed to uh, reach to reach the place I wanted. Reach the place I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. So although I had no money, I managed to reach the place I wanted, yes? That is a compound sentence. Oh, sorry. Well, what about this thinking of, uh, thinking of he would uh, ignore me? Uh, sorry, your voice, voice is sometimes not clear. Thinking? Thinking of uh, of um, being ignored by him. Thinking of being ignored by him. I decided. Mm -hmm. Not to bother. Him. Okay, now check it. Uh, has the sentence got two different clauses? No, I mean, uh, this is also a complex sentence. Okay, thinking of being ignored by him. I decided not to bother him. Thinking of... Uh, Yes, like this is I, I, <clears throat> this is compound sentence. That's right, because the first part, "think of being ignored by him," is a complete sentence. I decided not to bother him is another complete sentence. Mm. So that's okay. That's correct. correct. That's correct. Yeah. Remember, you have to just sometimes analyze whether it is correct or not. How do we say here? Um, I think he might be ignoring me. Like you don't know exactly, but it is probably he will be, he will ignore me, and that's why I decided. But here I should, uh, just thinking of uh, being of might being ignored by him. What do you say? Or oh, is it's the version or version of, of this sentence? Uh, that's the character thinking of being ignored by him. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Raj, your first example, although I'm in trouble, I help him, that is incorrect, because it's a mixture of past and present tense. Although the pizza, the pizza has the detrimental effects on your health, people do consume. Yes, that is, this is correct example. Uh, we rarely use complex sentences, but most of the times we use simple and complex uh, compound sentences in our writing. And that, that, that these two things are desirable, being an IELTS candidate. Okay, now come to the introduction part once again. Paraphrase the title, one to three lines of sentences. And also in the paraphrasing, write the overview. What does the overview mean? If you remember, Ainura? Um, overview, main idea is that to convey the idea of the topic in two sentences. The general yeah. idea, what you're gonna talk right about. and paraphrasing is very important in IELTS writing remember yeah I know and in order to know good paraphrasing techniques you have to 
obviously you know um, know the synonyms and antonyms mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. uh, that is desirable mm -hmm. great so now in Cambridge dictionary paraphrasing ex definition is uh, to repeat something written or spoken using different words often in a humorous form or in a simpler and shorter form that makes the original meaning clearer overview means significant gradual sudden increase rise fall decrease etc we're going to give an example later because we don't have much time today and we'll write actually i wrote though last week but we'll rewrite it again okay wow. uh, we have still got five minutes okay let let me show you can you see the screen or is it blur um, a little bit closer to yeah, because it is a like PDF format, I cannot make it larger. <laughs> okay, it says it's a bar chart. Okay, this graphs graphs chart below mm -hmm. below give information about the computer mm -hmm. ownership as a percentage of the population between 20, 2002 to two thousand ten, mm -hmm. and by level of education for the years two thousand two and two thousand. So there are two graphs okay first one is computer ownership five for five countries and the second one is compared the educational level and how many people are the owner of the computer mm -hmm. teacher may I sorry for butting in there is 100 percent here on your screen can you make it to maybe 125 yeah but you know because it is a pdf it doesn't become larger mm. i understand this is 100 percent look if i want to make it larger it is not because it's pdf mm. okay mm -hmm. so uh, this is sample test from one of the test centers that i got from internet to have practice mm -hmm. okay you're gonna do it more we have time yes uh, we have got only two minutes so if you want what i can do i can send it this to you later mm -hmm. so that yeah. you can have a look yeah i just prepare in advance and uh, yes well, okay. i think that will that will be better okay you just correct me okay all right hello murad welcome raj says let me solve thank you very much raj for all your lovely comments okay so what happens remember when you see the topic or the question you have to mm -hmm. paraphrase from there and you have to write overview for both of them can you make uh, one example teacher for example where is the phrase and you do for paraphrase okay so for this task actually it's it should be shown directly the first bar charts you see mm -hmm. shows how the users tend to grow up from 2002 to 2010 it is quite understandable that it was a slow, steady, but smooth growth. Look, paraphrased. And the second one explains percentage of owners changed during the specific period of time. It was gradual increase. If you can see, it is increasing, okay, from going down top. But the first one, also it is going, but it's slowly, mm -hmm. if you compare. Mm -hmm. So that is totally depends on your observation. Mm -hmm. okay. okay and also remember when you're writing there are some formal ways to write and I'm, we have a uh, like a group of words that explains like a little increase slight increase a gradual increase slow increase uniform increase steady mm -hmm. increase you know mm -hmm. on the decreasing side is same slow decrease mm -hmm. gradual decrease uniform decrease mm -hmm. etc Okay, we've got 50 seconds more. Uh, please remember uh, to check some of the websites that gives you the opportunity to sit for the mock test or sample test. Okay, Ainura? Yeah. And it's better to you know, have a good concept how the questions are set and how you can answer it. Mm -hmm. All right, and thank you very much for being here and all the lovely people. And Raj, thanks for a proactive.
you know. Thank you, Jijun. Have a good time. Have yeah, good I'll see you. Yeah. I'll see you. Take care, guys. And remember, practice the magic. Or the more you practice, you'll be confident. You'll be motivated. Okay. And if you've got any other writing, I know, please send it to me by email. Okay. I'll have a look. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see Thank you later. You take care. Bye.